Hello everyone and welcome to WSA Speakers Chat. So today I'm really excited to join you once again. My name is Tracy Eman. I'm part of the WSA leadership team and I am your host of this wonderful speaker chat. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to learn from our WSA Premier members and today I'm, I'm really excited to have Kimberly Clark with us. So welcome Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. It's a pleasure to be here. So today, what we're going to talk about is how to be the architect of your life. And um, this is something we've had, a, we were chatting just before this started, and, and there's going to be a lot of great information that Kimberly is going to share with you. But first of all, I want to take this opportunity to read your bio. So Kimberly, Kimberly Clark, lifestyle expert, life coach, speaker and author of Ask Kimberly Lifestyle and the Vision Within, ACL, encourages, empowers, and elevates individuals to fulfilling their potential and manifest the most out of life. That's right. By loving yourself first and manifesting your thinking, there is no limit to living every day fabulous. Kimberly's passionate speaking provides the drive and the guidance her clients and audience needs to imp improve their career, relationships, and lives. Her book, Glam, and the Vision Within Workshops are the beginning platform to manifesting the future one truly desires. Kimberly Clark is a renown, renowned <laughs> lifestyle expert with over 20 years experience, an author, a lifestyle enhancement speaker, and a featured love and lifestyle advice columnist on Soul Kisses TV, personifies the pure essence of love. And you're going to provide some information a little bit later on how people can get in touch with you and so forth. Yes, yes. Perfect. So let's start with the first question. Um, what I want to know is, and I think probably our, our audience wants to know as well, is what, what's the definition of architect and how can that be constructed um, into to construct one's everyday life? So your, your three C's. Yes, well, you know, um, a lot of people look at being an architect as far as building homes and construction and landscaping and different things. But the Webster's Dictionary definition is the building of construction and is looking at yourself as far as how you relate to different things. So what I relate to it as is look at it as your body is an estate and you have there's levels to the estate you have the first level you have the second level and you have the bottom level right so the first level is your mind the second level is the structure the third level is your foundation and with any construction you need a solid foundation in order for it to stay secure and safe, even during the earthquake. The house may shake, the building may shake, and usually they'll only come down if it's not secure, if there's cracks. And that's the same way as, you know, yourself living in your life. I love that connection between the two, too, because I, I, it's true that foundation is important in every aspect of what we do, whether it's our, our lives, our relationships, our, um, our business. So I, that, that's a great um, comparison there for sure. Thank so you. You, um, you are, hang on a second, my apologies. Please provide our viewers with the care tools needed to be the archetype, the architect of your life. You know, there's a lot of tools that you can encompass um, to be the architect of your life. And the three tools, as I stated earlier, are your mind, your body, and your spirit. So in order for one of the two to work, all of them have to work. They have to be equal. And your mind is essential. If your mind is not clear of clutter and stress, then that affects the anger, which is your body. So you can go on and on about your day, but when you have stress, it's gonna affect you in some form of another. And eventually it's gonna knock you down. So that's where the foundation needs to be secure. It needs to be the anchor 
And that's important that your anchor has to be secure in order for you to maintain your day-to-day -day lifestyle. Perfect, perfect. And I'm just checking in. We have people joining us. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, so um, welcome everyone who's joined us so far. And we also want you to, if you're coming in later and you're watching the recording, because the recording will be here for you, um, definitely leave us any questions that you might have along the way. How many of you feel like you have that secure foundation? Or are you kind of almost maybe, you know, playing Jenga with things, right? You, you forget about that foundation and things feel like they're going to fall. Um, it's really important to have that foundation and um, we would love to hear sort of how you've set up your foundation or any questions that you might have for Kimberly along the way. Also keep in mind that if we don't address the questions during our speaker chat, um, Kimberly will come back afterwards and answer any of the questions in the comments area as well. Okay, so Absolutely. you're you're not going to miss out if you're if you're in the middle of something else at this point, right? So, yes, perfect. So let's move on to the next question. Um, well, you state that the three C's will help individuals with the following: one, they're going to learn to talk, to speak your truth. So, um, so and un unapologetically. So you know you don't have to worry about what everybody else is thinking. You're going to say what you need to say, basically, is, is what you're saying, right? Yes. yes. Perfect. Okay, the other thing that we're going to, or that you had mentioned, was how to stop self-sabotaging actions you create that block your blessings. Oh, that's a powerful one, because Absolutely. that self-sabotage is just crazy. It's a dangerous, dangerous toxin. Yeah. Definitely. And then number three, the transformation process you must undergo to birth the results you deserve. So please share your three C's that are required to design the life that you truly desire uh, and, and really just kind of roll that back into how, why it's important to speak your truth, um, stop the self-sabotaging and make that transformation process start to go. Yes. Well, it's really important for you to know yourself. And a lot of people with social media happening around and, you know, everyone is, there's so much out there to look at and to view. And sometimes we lose track of where the direction that we're going because you see someone else doing something that maybe, you know, it's like being a kid. You see the shiny things and you lose and you get distracted by it. You have to stay on course. You have to stay in your lane and do things that work for you. Being the architect of your life is really knowing yourself, really knowing what is of value. If you have issues with stress, if you have issues with self-love, then those are things that you need to address head on before you're trying to build a business, before you're trying to enhance a relationship, whether it's personal or professional. If you don't get a hold of on it, then you're going to engage in different things that are going to cause roadblocks. So the three things that I would like to share with everyone is there are three C's, and I'm going to go through them individually. One is don't compete. Once again, we have social media, you're looking at different things, and maybe someone has more followers, and you look at that and you start to try to do what they do. Be yourself. Define your own values and views and know what is important for you. Align your truth. And don't compete means your vision literally serves a purpose for the blueprint. Create your own blueprint and lay the foundation from that. Your ability to walk in life and create the architect of your life depends on how you set and lay the foundation. So don't compete with other people. In the end, it's not gonna work. Be yourself. Number two is don't compare. Stop comparing your life to someone else's life. You may see something that someone has gotten some grand news, but you don't know what they went through to get to that aspect. Run your race. Stay in your lane, do the work. 
you know, so many people want to get into the speaking business and the life coach business, but you have to do the work. You have to know the foundation and the blueprint that it takes to get in certain situations. So don't look at someone else and see what they're doing and wish, oh, wow, I wish I was there. I wish they had that. They did the work. You don't know the struggles and how many years it took them to get to that level. The third one is don't compromise. Don't compromise means don't compromise your self-worth and your value. Don't dumb down yourself to accept things things that you really want to say no to. Stop saying yes to number two things. And we all know what number two is. I'm using it in a different form of way. But stop saying yes to number two things that you hate. You know, that took me a long time to realize that. A friend told me years ago, you work the job, don't let the job work you. And when you feel like you're just running the race every single day and you really don't have time for yourself and you're doing things to maybe add to your resume or your bio, but in the end, you've lost yourself in it. So that's what I mean by don't compromise. Don't compromise your self-worth to get to something that is minimal. That's not going to be there years down the line. So those three things again are don't compete, don't compare, and don't compromise. Those um, three C's are really powerful. And when you're kind of talking, there's a couple of things that you're talking about. Just at the end there, you're talking about, you know, not getting caught up in doing things that are really not going to provide that value to you at all. And exactly. really they're, they're the things that are actually gonna probably chip at that foundation. Even if you've built that foundation up, they're gonna chip at making it weak again, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then don't compete. Uh, I'm a firm believer too that, you know, competing, we don't need to compete with other people. There's more than enough people that are providing maybe a similar service or whatever it might be, but everybody's different. So if you're yourself, people are going to want to do business with you. If you're yourself, people are going to want to, you know, build relationships with you, whether it be right. business or personal or so forth. And then you're not pretending because it gets tired. It gets really tiring to pretend, right? And once yes. again, that foundation gets chipped at. And yes. don't compare. That, I think that one's probably, you know, in my mind, that's maybe even almost the hardest one is because, you know, like you said, with social media, and, and that's, you know, I spend a lot of my time doing social media, mm -hmm. and you are, you're comparing what other people are doing. But it's like that one hit wonder, those bands, right? Like, you're yes. like, Oh, my goodness, like, oh, where do they come from? They're so lucky they, they made it big so fast, and then you actually find the backstory. And it's been 20 years in a, in a dark, dingy <laughs> bar until right. all of a sudden, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So but I think you know. the, I think the big thing with those people too, and for all of us as individuals, is if you build that foundation, you know what you want, you don't go and spend more time on those number two things that really are not serving you. You can achieve what you want to achieve. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's crucial that the foundation starts with a vision. You have to have a vision for your destiny. And when I'm facilitating classes, I have the word destiny spelled out without the why. And I ask everyone in the class, please tell me what this says. And a lot of people are saying, looking at it and looking at it and I'm like, well, the why is missing. And it's like, exactly. You can't create your destiny without knowing your why. You have to know your why in life. Your why, not Sally's why, not Jim's why, your why. And the minute that you shift from your own foundation, it's going to crumble because you're trying to compete, you're trying to compare, and you're compromising your own self-worth and your value because you're not living in your truth, because you're trying to do what someone else is doing. And that will never get you to success. 
And do you find that that you, when you're talking to people, that that is where everybody's stuck at is is just not not knowing their why, or having it be somebody else's why? It, yes, yes, and a lot of that is because of TV, social media, magazines. You have so many people telling you the way you should look, the way you should speak, how you should dress, what you should do in life, what you should drive, where you should live, what you should eat. You have to know your own worth to know, I love food, I'm a foodie, but I do it in moderation. I don't just eat you know, bad food all day long, but I love to eat what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, It's my life, but I do it in moderation. So it's really crucial that you set that foundation for yourself first. And these are questions that I kind of ask my clients. And a lot of times you can't get to the anchor that secures you because you have so much baggage that you haven't faced. You've closed the door on the bad stuff and you're trying to move forward and you'll never move forward because it keeps hitting. Mm. You know, it, it's gonna show up in your life in some way or some form if you don't face it head on. And that's where your anchor has to be secure. You have to have a solid foundation. You have to have your blueprint, which is your vision, in order to build the levels, like I said, the level one. If your mind is not anchored, it's gonna crumble. If your body is not anchored, it's gonna crumble. If your spirit is not anchored, it's gonna crumble. So you'll never have that solid anchor, that structure of safety. I'm sure that's gonna take um, a lot of people and have them think about what they're doing right now and, and maybe what's holding them back because they, they probably feel like they're doing everything right. And like you said, it's, it's the baggage. And you're saying like, it's, it's almost not like a self-sabotage. It's just, it's just everything coming at you can result in that because maybe you're reacting, you're trying to, you know, save yourself and, and, yeah. you know, from it. So therefore it's easier to ignore it uh, brush it under the rug and move on with something else, but it's still actually holding you back. Yeah. A lot of people are fighting it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's the mechanic of our mindset is when something doesn't go our way, we go back to a child and we want to fight it. And sometimes you need to face it head on. You know, a lot of things I teach people is things that are bad in your life, you can't really always look at it as bad. You have to look at it as a test. In order to succeed, the universe is going to take you through different tests. And one analogy, you know, I tell people, if you have a hard time with your finances, and you know, I'm a faith person, I believe in God, and I believe in the universe, and what you put out is what you get back. And if you have a hard time with your finances, the universe will never give you more because you don't know how to handle your finances. You know, as I said, a lot of people, you compare, you look at the car someone drives or the clothes that they have, the purse that they had. But who's to say that they bought that purse? Maybe it was a gift. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to stop judging one another and women have this so bad. You know, I see this every day. We need to be supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. There's enough room for all of us to rise and not to compromise and self-sabotaging. Sometimes you need to look at your circle and your circle includes friends and family. And sometimes you need to put people in the garage, in the basement, you know, and not let them of the levels of your mind, your body, and soul. Put them in, you know, the basement sometime. It's seasons. Everyone doesn't deserve to go with you in all the seasons of your life. Mm -hmm. So you have to know when to say no, and this is not good for me. But you also have to support the ones that support you 
and, and do for you. It, it's a give and take. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, that's with Women Speakers Association. We're about women supporting women. And boy, does it ever feel wonderful to have to surround yourself with people that get you and yes. or support you have been to, you know, whatever stage you're at, have been there before and and can cheer you on. It just uh, I don't think there's anything like it. And you're right. So, like, stop if, if you feel like you're in a situation where the people around you are 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 part of that that sabotaging, that head-butting type, um, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, like that atmosphere, then yeah. it's time to remove yourself from that atmosphere and go to where people are, are able to support you and you're able to support them because it is. It's a, it's a give and take, but it's like the more you give, the more you receive. And like you're talking about, you know, the, the law of attraction and, mm -hmm. and how you how you feel about money or how you feel about the people that are around you, uh, that all comes back to you too. So Absolutely. look for the positive. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome. I love this. I love the, I love the just sort of breaking it down, really going back. I just, I keep going back to foundation, but it's so important. And, you know, if you look at people, you're building a business, you want a business plan. You need mm -hmm. that foundation to start. You can't just start going, oh, I have this great idea and I'm going to start the business tomorrow and I'm going to get out and be on the stage, but I, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I don't know what I'm going yeah. to say. I don't have, right? Yes. So it's really important to, to know this and I'm, I'm awesome. It's awesome that you can share that with us. Um, if anybody's watching us at this point, we would love for you to also maybe let us know if you feel like you've got, you know, you've been self-sabotaging. Is that something that sort of oh, wait a second, maybe there's a reason I, you know, I'm doing everything right, but something's holding me back. We would love to, we'd love to hear, we'd love to be able to support you. We are here for you. Uh, Kimberly, so I know as a lifestyle coach, you also facilitate vision within workshops. And this sounds really interesting. What are some of the tools in reference to today's topic that you instill in your attendees and lifestyle coaching clients? And you probably touched a little bit on it in our conversation so far, but I would love for you to share again. Absolutely. Um, I hold vision within workshops and that's creating your design, your destiny vision boards. And a lot of people think vision boards are just get a piece of cork board, cut out some magazine clippings and post it on. And this is where your foundation and creating the blueprint. You have to create a solid blueprint of what you want. So I sit down with my attendees and my clients and speak with them first and kind of discover some of their history. You know, a lot of people have sometimes the material things that they want to put on their vision board, but they have to one, know their why. What is your why? So maybe sometimes they're having a challenge in their marriage. They may be having challenges at work. They may hate their job and want to start a business but not really sure what business should I start? And it really is more than just cutting out clippings from a magazine and putting it on. You have to do the research, do the research of your past and get rid of some of the things that are self-sabotaging you from moving forward. You have to look at the people that are around you. If you've been trying to create a business for so long, and no one is supporting you, no one is helping you, no one is uplifting you or encouraging you, you know, to do something. It's negative, negative, negative. Then that's something you need to kind of put down. So I really have them look at their past and I give them questions to fill in from their past. And then I have them look at their present. And by looking at their present, I have them look at what could they have done differently from something that was negative in their past? How could they have turned it around to be different? And then I have them look at their future. And I give them a vow to say that will help them enhance their future moving forward. And then and only then are we able to create the vision board. So I do vision boards by three months, five months, a year. Some start at beginning, some have done it and have really processed it. In order to do the vision board, you have to work it. So I really make sure people put it somewhere where they can see it daily and hold them accountable. 
I have journals that go with the vision boards and I follow up with them and make sure that they are holding themselves accountable for what they said that they want to manifest in their future. So you have to do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, you really have to do the work. It's like being a child and having a coloring book and you're trying your hardest to stay within the lines. And that's the accountability. And staying in the line is staying in your lane, mm -hmm. not someone else's lane. You know, design the life that you want to move forward. And, and that's really important. And sometimes you have to call them on their stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because they're not being realistic or they're not doing the work. It takes work. It takes work to manifest happiness in a life. And every day is not going to be beautiful. But how are you going to deal with those days that are not great? So that that's kind of the tools that I teach them. Perfect. And now these workshops, um, you'd mentioned they kind of they go over a period of time. Are they are they something that people will come to a set location with you, or you do it? Do you do it on like a Skype or Zoom call, or is there variations of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good question. They're actually um, in person. And I do at least two larger scale ones, which usually is 40 or more people, where a group of women, I've had men in classes where we get together and do it. Sometimes girls will get together and get their girlfriends together and do it in their home. I've had business owners who have purchased the workshops for their staff and I go to their home and, and do it. So it could be encompassed with girlfriends. It could be encompassed with a corporate setting. It, it just depends on what the client wants or the individual. If they just want a one-on-one, -on -one, then we'll do a one-on-one. -on -one. Some people have tried, you know, the board and then some people are at a different level. So it kind of depends on where you are and what your goals and desires are. So really having clarity, setting the intention, accountability and manifesting i love the the concept that you said where you'd go to corporate and 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 they they sort of purchase it for them but you know um i work with other companies that are about wellness and employee wellness and what a what an interesting option and opportunity to reward and help your employees feel you know, good about themselves and, and manifest the life that they want, because I would, I would think that that would have a huge impact on the company's bottom line when you've got happy centered employees with that foundation and a love for what they're doing. Yes, yes. A lot of um, HR departments, um, health wise, are incorporating lifestyle wellness. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting discounts on their HR packages for medical because they offer health and wellness, you know, courses, how to eat well, things like this, you know, the vision workshop. I've done it in network settings. I just spoke recently um, how to network, you know, so I have different, you know, my brand is different ways of people um, where they come to me from marketing and public relations as well, because that's what my other business used to, to be. So it's kind of hard sometimes to get out of that mm -hmm. when people know that's what you're about. And once again, speaking, when you're speaking on different levels, it can go anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, it can go anywhere. But we spend, people who do have a nine to five, they spend majority of their time at work mm -hmm. versus home. So make your surroundings a positive surrounding, whether if you put a vision board up, if you put... Um, manifestation notes, encouragement around, you need to center your space. You know, I've been in corporate America before where you have people down the hall, maybe you don't get along with, or there's someone that is just always that individual who was causing harm within the entire building. You have to know how to protect your space. Mm -hmm. So it's really important, you know, to do that in that way when you go into that office or, you know, that corporate meeting or that event that you know how to deal with individuals and you don't let it get to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. So everything that you shared today has been fabulous. Um, and, you know, 
Women Speakers Association. We're talking about how you, how you can get out there and speak, but also, you know, we can pull everything back to having that foundation. What is your why? So I would love for everyone who is watching right now and everybody that's going to be watching the replay, because I know we'll have a lot of people come back after this Easter long weekend. It's a little bit slower today, but people start to come back on board. And yes. I would love to know what is your why? If you yes. type out the word destiny, but don't put the why on it you need your why to reach your destiny and to manifest what you want. So please share your why in the comments below whenever you are listening to this, because we would love to know. And we'll love to see that. Yeah, definitely. It'd be so cool. And I'm going to figure out my why as well. So it's, I think, and I think you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that there's, there's different times in your life and in your business where that why may change. And that's okay. Right. Yes. So, yes. um, you know, maybe your why last year was one thing, but you know, today it's something else. Now, if you change your why daily, you're going to have a problem with that foundation. Yes. And <laughs> but, you know, that just means you're evolving, you know, yeah. it's not for you to stay stagnant. You're evolving to the next level. So definitely write it down, move forward and move on. That's what it's about. Perfect. Okay. Well, in closing, can you let our viewers know what you're currently working on and how they can connect with you. Absolutely. Um, right now, which we talked about earlier, I am working on a national event, which is the NCNW 50th anniversary, which is a national organization out of Washington, DC, but I am on the executive board for the Inland Empire chapter. And on May 5th, we will be celebrating 50 years of being an organization. We have a lot of very influential leaders and individuals who were coming. And after I get off with you, I'm going to have to close the sales because we're completely sold out of the event and working on that. That's been taking a lot of my time. And then I will be holding um, more workshops for the Inland Empire Business Women's Center coming up. Wonderful. Yes, you're, you're saying, I mean, it's such a huge effort to you know, make an event like this happen. And, you know, kudos to you because, you know, you're just so calm and relaxed. <laughs> and I, get I get that a lot. I get that a lot. A lot of people say, you're, you're so calm. It's like you're going crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's once again, when you do what you love and, you know, I'm really about my community and compassion and connecting. So those are my three C's. So anytime that I can be a value to my community, be a value to an individual to empower them and also change lives, then I'm, I'm happy. That's awesome. And I'm just, we actually have a question or not a question, but somebody is sharing their why. And I would love to share it with you. Absolutely. We, we end this chat and it's Angie Jones. And she says, my why is to inspire, motivate and encourage a legacy of leaders. And that is really powerful. Thank you so much, Angie, for sharing that. I love that, Angie. Um, legacy, that, that's actually the theme of our event, legacy. And that is something that is so empowering that more of us need to kind of look at, not the day-to-day -day of how we're living, but what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? If, if something was to happen to you today, what would people say about you and your footsteps? So legacy, I love that. Very important. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, we are, I know that you have to dash off and I really appreciate you taking the time today and joining us. Definitely come back and, and cycle through the comments because I know that it can continue to come and we'll be sharing this out as well. And thank you so much for, for coming on board. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Tracy. It's a pleasure. And I'm so proud to be a premier member of w, um, WSA. And I wish you guys all blessings and love. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.